St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Our celebrant today is the director of the Manresa Retreat House here in Toronto, Jesuit Father Michael Coots. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist and this feast of Saint Benedict. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors who are anonymous, and the Mass is being offered for the living and deceased members of their family. May their souls and the souls of the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. As we begin this Eucharist, we welcome Catherine, who will be singing for the first time at our televised Mass, and we wish her all the best. We wish also to pray for our Benedictine brothers here and across the world who continue to be a witness of God's love for each one of us. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who made the abbot, Saint Benedict, an outstanding master in the school of divine service, grant, we pray, that putting nothing before the love of you, we may hasten with, lo with a loving heart in the way of your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take words with you and return to the Lord, Say to him, take away all guilt, accept that which is good, and we will offer the fruits of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. We will say no more, our God, to the work of our hands. In you the orphan finds mercy. I will heal their dis disloyalty. I will love them freely, for my anger has turned them, has turned from them. I will be like the Jew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall strike root like the forests of Lebanon. His shoots shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive tree, and his fragrance like that of Lebanon. They shall again live beneath my shadow. They shall flourish as a garden. They shall blossom like a vine, and their fragrance shall be like the wine of Lebanon. O Ephraim, what have I to do with idols? It is I who answer and look after you. I am like an evergreen cypress. Your faithfulness comes from me. Those who are wise understand these things. Those who are discerning know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the upright walk in them. But transgressors stumble in them. The words of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Jesus said to his disciples, See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death and father his child, and the children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Whenever we speak about religious orders like the Dominicans, the Franciscans, we think about the great saints that they are named after. The Dominicans named after St. Dominic, who was born in 1170 and died in the year 1221. And the followers of Dominic are called Dominicans, men and women who follow in his charism. The Franciscans, Saint, after St. Francis of Assisi, who was born 11 years after St. Dominic, in the year 1181 and died in 1226. They are known for their poverty. But these two great saints and their great orders followed in the footsteps of a man who was born 600 years ago before them, Saint Benedict. He was born in Nursia in Italy. He was born to a well-to-do family, but he soon found a hunger within his heart. The metropolitan of the metropolitan cities of Rome and other big places really did not satisfy him. He could not stand the chaos. He could not stand the confusion. There was greed. There was ambition. There was a desire to be in power. This was not for him. And so he left the metropolis and went out to a small village to live like a hermit, just like St. Anthony, who had lived about 300 years before. He wanted to live a simple life, to work and to pray, as they would say in Latin, ora et labora. And this attracted so many men that were similar, like-minded, that he very soon found that he had many people joining him, and he founded 12 small communities. He hadn't intended to start an order. All he wanted to do was to work and to pray. And wherever you go to any Benedictine monastery across the world, you will find them doing precisely that, to work and to pray. But they have two other qualities. One is the quality of hospitality. No traveler, wherever he or she comes from, who is on their journey, will ever be put outside a monastery. They are most welcome, and if they can afford something, well and good, but there would be no charge. And we think about Chaucer's Canterbury Tales as the pilgrims move from one place to another. Nowadays, before you get to a monastery, you probably would phone and make arrangements to be there. The second quality was the vow of stability. When you joined that monastery, that was your home for the rest of your life, where you would pray, where you would work. And this idea of stability would be there permanently even today. And the only time you would move to a monastery or move from your monastery would be to start another one. In St. Lucia, I learned about this at the Benedictine Monastery. 
And as I prayed at that monastery, the words of Isaiah in chapter 57, how beautiful are the feet of those on the mountain who bring good news. There was no need for the Benedictine nuns at this monastery to move anywhere. People from all over St. Lucia would come there. They would come for counseling, they would come for prayer, they would come for peace, they would come to have a taste of sacred space. It is something so beautiful that we need today. 1,500 years later after St. Benedict, they are so relevant today. The vow of stability, they are not a mendicant order going from one place to another to beg. They are not an order of preachers going and preaching missions, but everybody comes to them. <clears throat> and so we who do not follow in the footsteps of St. Benedict are still called to proclaim what they stand for, namely the love of God. And Father John Carton said only yesterday in the morning, that is all that we need to do. We need to preach the word, of, to preach to the world, not by words, but by our lifestyle that God is love. Sometimes we have to use words when we are confronted with evil. Other times we can be compassionate when somebody is suffering. Other times we can journey with another when we know that we can't help them if they're suffering from cancer or Alzheimer's or some crippling disease. We walk with them, we talk with them. And how do we do this? The simple method of St. Benedict was be open to the Word of God, to be open to God whose love prompts us and inspires us to work day by day. Ask for the Holy Spirit for courage and for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to know how to proclaim the Word of God. But most especially, to walk with Jesus and act in a Christ-like manner because the Word needs the Word made flesh who came to dwell within us to speak to us of the love of God. What we should keep in mind that when we go out to proclaim that God is love, it is not our choosing. God chooses us just like he chose St. Benedict. And when God chooses, it's God's work, it starts with God, it ends with God. And therefore, when we find that it is difficult at times and we do not know how to go ahead, then ask God, because it is God's work. And the way you and I can ask for God's work is through prayer. Very often our prayer turns out to be giving advice to God on how to run the world. Most of the time we should be still and silent. And God will speak to us, inspire us, surprise us, and give us a turning point in our life so that we can walk in the way of the Lord, just like St. Benedict did. St. Benedict, pray for us. Join me now as we pray together. For God's people, that they will respond to the invitation to live a life of enduring faith like St. Benedict, we pray to the Lord. Lord for world leaders, may they recognize the need to ensure justice for all, especially the weakest in our society, we pray to the Lord. Lord for our sponsors and for their intentions, for their families, both living and deceased, for our troops working in different parts of the world, struggling to keep peace and to bring stability. For our people of the First Nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all of you who have written in asking for prayers, those suffering from Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, those suffering from multiple sclerosis, we pray to the Lord. Father, in loving and gracious, through the intercession of St. Benedict, grant us enduring faith and strength to live according to your will. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. My sisters, my brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly, Lord, upon these holy offerings which we make in honor of Saint Benedict, and grant that by following his example in seeking you, we may merit the gifts of unity in your service and of peace. <coughs> we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in your saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as with one voice we sing. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and said the blessing, and giving, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, all the clergy and the entire people of God. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Benedict, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us now pray to God, our loving Father, in the words Jesus himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, My peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this year church, and grant us the peace, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. 
Having received this pledge of eternal life, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of Saint Benedict, we may faithfully serve your designs and love one another with fervent charity. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Our thanks to three anonymous donors whose generous contributions made the televising of today's Mass possible. Now available on CD, Music from the Missions, Part 3, 25 hymns from our missions of the past six years. The cost, $20. Please send a check to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Suite 100, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C2M6. Or call our office if you'd like to place an order. <laughs>